Good morning, precious people of God. How are you? Hello, hello, hello. Hello to you. Welcome to day five. It's no longer 21 days, guys. It's just going. It's just going. Should we do a 40? A 40 is only 16 days left. What's happening? What is happening, people of God? What is happening? Good morning to you. Question for you. How many people are seeing the junk in themselves? Like, as you're fasting, you're like, what is that? <laughs> no, 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 no. I gotta, no. This gotta be aligned. I repent. Lord, really? Anyone? Anyone been like, wait, I'm fasting and I'm, I'm seeing things. All right. Good stuff. It means it's working. It's working. Okay. I used to think that when I, um, sorry about my energy levels at 5 a.m. in the morning, but I, I literally do wake up like this, like, yay. Um, so I used to think that when I'm fasting, I should be having the holiest of times, right? Like I'm fasting. Gotta be like Daniel seeing angels and prophetic thing anyone expect that i wanna i wanna see i wanna come on now the heavens are open mm, yeah but let me tell you that let me tell you something let me tell you something see fasting has a purifying effect and if you understand but you're purifying something like water or gold or all that kind of stuff what happens is the impurities rise to the top so you can get it out of it so it's working what you shouldn't do is give up don't be like oh no i'm a lost cause i'm gonna try again no when the impurities rise to the top it means god is not giving it a hiding place you can't you can't numb it with like TV or food or, you know, some of you eating, put some of your stuff away. Like I can't do that. So I'm going to just eat. No. Now God is like, now let's deal with it. Okay. Okay. So be encouraged. Be encouraged. Stay in the fire. Hallelujah. Do me a favor. Type stay in the fire. Stay in the fire it's the refiner's fire stay there stay right right so people can see it we're talking to each other right now we're not next to our neighbors when we get to contend i'll be like turn to your neighbor and tell them this stay in the fire stay in the stay in it it's gonna purify you don't don't be like no 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 that's that's what it is okay you're seeing it and ask the lord to oh god this right here is not of you this right here is embarrassing jesus i cannot believe me in all my years of knowing you i'm still dealing with this but jesus i thank you that you do not condemn me you reveal to redeem you reveal to redeem the fact that you're showing me this means that you love me for you chastise those that you love spirit of god i operate this for do you see you you, you deal with it if you go None of you will go for surgery, but someone goes for surgery. They want to remove something from the person's body and they, they cut the person open and then they don't see it. Do you think there'll be a problem? I mean, it might be a miracle, but if the person still has the issue, they want to make sure that they see it so they can take it out. Okay. I remember one of these times you came, y'all think I just play songs, play songs. Like, and we were listening to Victoria and say, yes, through me. Cut through me, open me up. Do your surgical work in me till I see mm -hmm. like you. You see that one? You see that? Yeah. Yeah. It's working. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I wish I could tell you to tell your neighbor it's working, but I don't know. Type somebody's name like it's working. Okay. So stay in the fire. 
you're okay, but you're not okay, but you'll be okay. <laughs> you're going to be all right. Okay. You're going to be all right. I'm going to be all right. We are going to be all right. You're going to come out by the grace of God as refined gold. Hallelujah. Jesus. Come on. Hello. Hi. Amen. Glory to God. God is faithful. He's awesome. He's magnificent. Oh, he's holy. He's righteous. He is so amazing. Ah, my God, my God. All the glory must be to the Lord. For he alone is worthy of our praise. No man on earth should give glory to himself. All the glory must be to the Lord. All the glory must be to the Lord. For he alone is worthy of our praise. No man on earth should give glory to himself all the glory must be to the lord mm. he's worthy of all glory of all honor this is also worship do you know that sanctifying yourself is worship unto the lord did you know that? Did you know that? I'm asking, did you know that? Do you know this is part of worship? Sanctification is part of worship. You knew that, didn't you? Come on, you've been talking to me. Talk to me. Don't make me feel alone here. Yes, it's part of worship. That's right, it's part of worship. Romans chapter 12. I beseech you, now therefore, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Another version says, which is your reasonable worship. That's worship. Do you get it? Worship is not just the song we sing, it's the life we live. The ESV puts it like this. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, that to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship, which is your reasonable service which is your spiritual worship so when we come and we live our lives sacrificially before god and we present it as holy and acceptable to god it is worship it is worship if do you get it now do you get it now do you get it now Dr. Ruth says, yes. So I'm going to get you guys to be making some declarations. Type in the comment section, this is worship. <laughs> this is worship. This is worship. This. So when you're going through your day and your stomach is speaking in tongues, if you know what I mean, like your stomach is speaking in tongues, obviously that's your alarm to pray. Because we talked about it in fasting, we have different alarms. When, you, when your, your alarm is ringing, tell yourself, this is worship. When you're seeing something in you that should not be seen in you, but we're not operating in shoulds because it's there, you are going to go and say, God, operate this. In the name of the Lord Jesus, cut this out of me. This does not belong in your temple. This doesn't belong in your temple. This should not be in me. Remind yourself, this 
is worship. This is worship. This is worship. When you say no to a burger offered to you before, it's time for you to break. Tell yourself, this is worship. <laughs> this is worship. <laughs> hey, ba, 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 ba. Yes, Jesus. Glory to God. So, keep going. Keep going. Keep going. You're, you're facing God. You're turning your face to God. You're turning your face to God. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Savior. We thank you, Healer. We thank you, Sanctifier. We thank you, Purifier. We thank you, Refiner. We thank you, Jesus. Even as we've made the decision to turn to you, God, to turn our face to you, to allow you to clean us up, <laughs> to not let things, we don't want to talk things away. We want to clean up, Jesus. For the Bible tells us that you desire truth on the inward parts of us. We don't just want to be holy on the outside, but full of deadness on the inside. We don't want to be whitewashed tombs, God. We want to be holy, spirit, soul, and body. We want to present our bodies, our lives, a living sacrifice unto you, holy and acceptable unto you. For it is our reasonable service. It is our spiritual worship unto you. Hmm. Yes, Jesus. I pray for myself and everyone on this journey. I pray for grace that the things that we see that don't uh, look like what it should will not turn us away from you. We will not be discouraged, God. That even if on this journey we stumble or we stagger, we will not turn away, God. We will stay in the fire. <laughs> We will stay in the purifying fire. The Lord Jesus, you will have your way. You will have your way in us, my God. You will uproot that which is not of you. You will come as a refiner's fire to purify us, God. Till you can, mm, till you can see yourself in us. Jesus, till you can see yourself in us. Till you can see yourself. Hmm. Jesus. Till you can see yourself in us. I read a while ago. That when gold has been refined, when gold is, is being refined, it looks like glass. I don't know if anyone here is um, <clears throat> into like metals and uh, what's it called? Precious jewels, but gold has to be refined to clear it of impurities and make it of value. Gold has to be refined to clear it of impurities and make it of value. Gold unrefi unrefined is like dirt and has no value. Gold has to be heated in a furnace to refine it. This refining process gets rid of all dirt that gold that con that contains the gold. Gold cannot be manufactured. It is of the earth and is eternal in value. The streets of heaven are paved in gold. Some say gold is made by God. And that it is why it can't be manufactured by man. Others, other metals can be manufactured and you can get a manufactured version of that metal like silver, 
gold is precious and because of its inherent value is is used as a guarantee against currency hmm. the precious metal is mentioned in the bible as an analogy for how a believer is refined through trials to be transformed in a believer the process of sanctification is akin to the refining process trials and tribulations are part of the process of refinement it feels like we are in the furnace and going through the fires of purification this can be a painful process as a flesh dies to lust, so it's lost. God is a holy God and refines us to be holy. When gold is refined, it shows our reflection. Pure gold reflects like glass. Pure gold reflects like glass. Pure gold reflects, remember we've been talking about mirroring. Are you with me? Pure gold reflects like glass. We are being refined to look like Jesus. We will reflect the image of Jesus. Others will see us and see Jesus. <laughs> are you with me? So be encouraged. We are on this journey to make sure our mirror is, 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 is uh, clean. <laughs> our mirror is turned to the right direction, facing the right image so we can project the right image but it's a process also of refining because the truth is we're not made like glass as such. We are gold. He will refine us like gold. Some people are like, I didn't even pay for content. Why did I join this fast? Because God is calling his people to sanctification and holiness and you are his child. And so you are responding to the call of God to live holy for he is holy. Malachi, Malachi chapter 3, Malachi chapter 3, whatever the Lord says from verse 1, behold, I send my messenger and he will prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple and the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. Behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming and who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the sons of Levi and refine them like gold and silver, and they will bring offerings in righteousness to the Lord. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord as in the days of old and as in former years. We want to be a living sacrifice. Now, we are not sons of Levi, okay? The Levitical, the Levitical priesthood, I'm not trying to teach. If you're in Salem, South London, close your ears, do your own assignment. But the Levitical priesthood, they have an assignment at church to study priesthood, okay? And it's due on Sunday, so I'm, I'm trying not to tell them what to do. Anyway, the Levitical priesthood ended <laughs> grace she said flow flow um the levitical priesthood ended when jesus christ came and restored us back to the back to a new priesthood a new priesthood are you with me so i'm going to stop there because i'm not opening that kind of worms it's not worms but you know what i mean i'm not opening that door so but we are still priests. The Bible says we've been made priests according to scripture in the book of Revelation that Christ has made us a priest unto our God. But in order for us to be able to offer offerings in righteousness, it's not enough to just offer offerings. The kind of offering you offer matters. Um, and Apostle George says this, the presence of an altar is nothing without sacrifices which are regularly made. I add, without acceptable sacrifice. 
God wants us to offer sacrifice in righteousness. And so he purifies us. He, it's not, he's not just interested in the offering. He's also interested in how the offering is offered and the vessel offering. So put it this way. In the Old Testament, there were specifications on how the offering is offered, but not just how the offering is offered, how the one offering the offering is also offering that offering, because the truth is the offering was just a representation of the of Christ, but also of the one who is offering it. You probably have to go send that back again. Uh, yeah. It's a bit of a tongue twister, are you with me? So the, okay, well, you're with me, thank you. Sometimes I'm like, huh? <laughs> How I explain that, Jesus? Give me language, I'm, I'm glad you're with me. And so we're gonna continue. Yesterday, we looked at, I mean, we started looking at our three part, in spirit, soul, body. We started looking at our spirit and we're not, I'm gonna, we're gonna stay with spirit today because we want to make sure we start out with spirit and throughout the fast, we'll do spirit, we'll do soul, I will even do body, okay? You gotta pray for your child, you know you need to pray for your body because that, if you leave your soul and your body to just be freestyling, <laughs> you will not like the picture they paint, you understand? You have to make sure you walk in the spirit, you let the spirit, which is filled with the spirit of God, if you're born again, be in the driving seat, so you do not fulfill the lust of the flesh. But right now we're focusing on our spirit, man. I hope you took some time to pray yesterday. Let's look at some scriptures that's going to aim, that's going to um, guide our prayer. We front load the scriptures and then we pray. Turn your Bibles with me, please, to 2 Samuel chapter 24. We look at the Old Testament because it was written for our learning. For our learning. Second Samuel chapter 24, verse 1. Scripture says, Again, the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel, and he incited David against them, saying, Go number Israel and Judah. So the king said to Joab, the commander of the army who was with him, Go through all the tribes of Israel from Dan to Bathsheba and number the people that I may know the number of the people. But Joab said to the king, may the Lord God add to the people a hundred times as many as they are. While the eyes of my Lord, the king still see it. But why does my Lord, the king delight in this thing? But the king's word prevailed against Joab and the commanders of the army. So Joab and the commanders of the army went out from the presence of the king to number the people of Israel. They crossed the Jordan and began from Aroa and from the city that is in the middle of the valley towards Gad and to Jazza. Then they came to Gilead and to Kadesh in the land of the Hittites. And then they came to Dan. From Dan, they went to Sidon and came to the fortress of Tyre and to the cities of the Hevites and the Canaanites. They went out to Negev at Judah and at Beersheba. So when they had gone through all the land, they came to Jerusalem at the end of nine months. Wow, it took nine months to count them and 20 days. Job gave the sum of the numbering of the people to the king in Israel. There were 800,000 valiant men who drew the sword and the men of Judah were 500,000. But David's heart struck him after he had numbered the people. And David said to the Lord, I have sinned greatly in what I have done. But now, O Lord, please take away the iniquity of your servant for I have done foolishly. And when David arose in the morning, the word of the Lord came to the prophet Gad, David seer saying, Go and say to David, thus says the Lord, three things I offer you, choose of them that I may do it to you. So God came to David and told him and said to him, shall three years of famine come to your land or will you flee three months before your foes while they pursue you or shall there be three days of pestilence in your land? Now consider and decide what I answer, shall, what answer I shall return to him who sent me. Have you ever been in trouble with your parent and they tell you to pick your punishment? Anyone ever experienced that? I definitely have experienced that with my parents. Where they're like, do you want the belt? Do you want the koboko? No koboko is. <laughs> do you want the 
Bankere. Do you want? <laughs> I used to be like, no, I'm not choosing. I don't want any of them. It's not a matter of want. I don't want any of those things. Right. If you read this, and I, I've read this chapter before. Um, oh, Brother Follow, that was very a rare. That was always a, a rare sighting when you had to, for me anyway, it was a red sighting about what when to choose, but it is definitely was part of the childhood. Um, I used to say, but God, why would you punish him if you're the one that told him to do that? Why would you punish him? The anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel and he incited David. Please note that our, our Jewish brothers and sisters back then ascribed everything to God. Everything to God. Every, like, have you not read Job? Job, like, you know, Shall we receive good from the hand of God and not receive bad? They ascribed everything to God. So you need to kind of study closer. First Chronicles gives us an insight. Remember, this is a man after God's heart. First Chronicles chapter 21, verse 1. It says, same account of what happened. We're not going to read the whole thing, but same account. The Bible says, then Satan stood against Israel and incited David to number Israel. Satan, not God, Satan stood against Israel and incited David to number God. Remember the book of James says, when anyone is tempted, they shouldn't say they're tempted by God because God cannot tempt with evil. James chapter one, verse 13. 13. God cannot be tempted by evil and he doesn't use evil to tempt others. This is a quote that rings with me because I hear people after they've sinned against God and maybe in his mercy, they have been redeemed. They have learned lessons and they are grateful to, for the lessons they've learned. And then you hear people say, you know what? I can't say I regret what I did because if I didn't do that, then I wouldn't be here. And I'm like, don't take mercy for granted. God does not need your sin to teach you his ways. God doesn't need sin to make you who he's called you to be. What you are enjoying, uh, the, the first, the scripture in Chronicles was first Chronicles 21 verse one. Are you think so when it says Satan first Chronicles 21 gives us an insight that it wasn't God that um, incited David it was Satan Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number the children of Israel now why was that a big deal it was a big deal because in the law they were told not to number, they were not meant to do um, census, they were not allowed to number the people of Israel because part of the covenant that God had with Abraham is that they will be as the sand of the seashore and the stars in the sky, are you with me? So numbering them was putting, it's almost like unbelief, like putting a, a what's the word? A gauge on how much God had fulfilled his word, are you with me? Should I give you scripture on that? Shall I? Let me find it. So that um, okay, Numbers chapter 1 <laughs> verse 49 is um, is a quote there's one in deuteronomy 
Okay, Araba is a Deuteronomy Lord. Um, sorry, bear with me. I didn't have the coordinates of that set for today. Uh, let's see. Where can I get it? I think Deuteronomy chapter 17. Am I correct? Abba. Maybe I should just give you guys this homework so we can we can move. Okay. I'm not that person. I'm the person that would want to search for all the scriptures. Anyway. So, it was under the law. They shouldn't do that. Now, my point, because of time, is this. You may love Jesus, and I think we all do, because you're fasting 21 days, and hopefully you're not doing it to lose weight and get your summer body quickly, because fasting is not a diet. It's a spiritual diet, but it's not. That's not the weight loss. It's not. That's not what we're supposed to be doing. It. In fact, you want to gain spiritual weight. As I was praying, preparing for today, in the sanctification of our spirit. Remember, our spirit has the ability. I told you yesterday, to commune. One of the functions of our spirit. It's not the only functions, but we we highlighted three functions of the spirit yesterday: communion, conscience, intuition. Your spirit, man. As a believer. You want it to be tuned to God, facing God, engaging with God. But your spirit has the ability to also connect to other spirits. And people are like, oh, but it's the Old Testament. Where is this in the New Testament? Matthew 16, verse 23. Matthew 16, 23. Remember that Peter in Matthew 16 had just said to Jesus, Thou art Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus says to him, flesh and blood has not revealed that to you, but my father, which is in heaven, my goodness, Peter receives inspiration, download, revelation from God about the identity of Christ. Amazing. That even gets him commendation. <coughs> when Jesus says this, you know, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not be prevail against you. He tells me, I'll give you the keys of the kingdom. Amazing moment. Amazing. But then later on, you see in verse 23 that Jesus is looking at St. Peter and rebuking the devil, looking at Peter, the same Peter that had revelation about the Christ from God. Jesus looks at the same Peter and discerns that the influence is no longer God. The influence that is behind him rebuking Jesus about going to the cross is no longer God but the devil, he says, get thee behind me, Satan, for you are no longer mindful of the things of God. That lets me know that my spirit man can be influenced by different spirits. Let's keep going. And then one would say, <clears throat> you know, they were still, they still had not received the outpouring of the spirit of God. Okay, I get it. You see this man called Judas. Judas, Judas, uh, brother Judas. What a tragic story. Judas had been, again, one of the 12 that had walked, like Peter, walked with the Lord. He's part of the 12. He's not part of the three, but he's part of the 12. Peter was part of the three. But you know, Judas part of the 12, had a level of trust with Jesus, because number one, he's part of the 12. Also, he looks after the purse. But in John chapter 13, John 13, are you tracking with me? Are you with me? Good. In John chapter 13, You would read
in verse 27. Then after he had taken the muzzle, Satan entered into him. Oh, who's he? After he said, someone's going to betray me. You know, Jesus is like upset and stuff. In verse 26, Jesus answered, it is he to whom I will give this muzzle of bread when I've dipped it. So when he dipped the muzzle, he gave it to Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. Then after he had taken the muzzle, Satan entered. Ha! Satan entered into him. Jesus said to him, what you're going to do, do quickly. Satan entered into Judas. Judas that was close enough to be sitting with Jesus at the table. Judas that received bread from the hand of Jesus. Give us this day our daily bread and lead us not into temptation. Judas, the Bible says, Satan entered him. And people are like, but you know, it was already prophesied that someone was going to betray Jesus. So he didn't have a choice. The Bible says that the enemy goes about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. First Peter chapter five. <laughs> but you see, as much as it was prophesied, I like, why was it? Why was it Judas? Why was it Judas? There were other 12. Why did, why did it have to be him? No. In John chapter 12, When Mary was anointing Jesus with that expensive oil, some of the disciples were not happy like Judas. John 12 verse four, but Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, he was about to betray him, said, why was this ointment not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? He said this, not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. And having charge of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put in it. Judas was betraying Jesus before he betrayed Jesus. Judas was betraying Jesus before he betrayed Jesus. Judas was good ground. He was already doing things because not every bad thing a human does has a spiritual component. You have free will, you have a choice. But you do something consistently enough, you will invite a spirit to help you. <laughs> not help you. <laughs> it's not really help. But to... Uh, create a stronghold in that area. That's why you have to be one that enforces the kind of things you want to see with your actions so that it can draw the right spirit. Are you with me? He was already betraying Jesus. So Satan had a foothold. When the Bible says, do not give the enemy a foothold, it means don't add, give him an opportunity to come in because he would then take it beyond what you would normally have. When Judas, unfortunately, too late, came to himself, you could see that the, the, the grief, it was like, Ooh, what, what did I do? I mean, I've, I've read, I, I studied psychology for a bit at school and I, I, I read cases where someone had been maybe playing violent, um, computer games and one day they acted out what they had been playing are you with me in and then once they snapped out of it it was like what did i do but they had already been creating the atmosphere of violence create whatever you don't want to see grow in your life don't sow the seed 
whatever you want to see grow in your life, sow the seed. And still one would say, Judas was also not in the new covenant. Judas was not in the new covenant. How can you, we're, we're in a new covenant. This doesn't apply to us. Everything that was written in scripture is for our learning. But I believe Apostle Paul understood this, which is why we have Galatians chapter five, where it tells us, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. You and I are not enslaved by God. We're, we can make ourselves slaves to God, but he doesn't enslave us. So with your liberty, you can still choose whether to obey God. Remember Romans chapter 6? Whether you yield your members so you become servants of. Walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. The enemy still goes about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Resist him being steadfast in the faith. First Peter chapter 5. That's why you have scriptures that says, do not give the enemy a foothold. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 27. Let's read that first. Because I think it works very well with the journey we've just gone through with Judas. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 27. Judas was betraying Jesus before he betrayed Jesus. Wow. All right. Because it's in the middle of a verse, we'll take it to 25. Ephesians 4, 25. Therefore, having put away falsehood, let each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor. For we are members of one another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger and give no opportunity to the devil. Why would Apostle Paul write this to the church if it was impossible for us to give opportunity to the devil? Talk to me. In the book of Vanessa, in the book of Tosega, in the book of Folu, in the book of Wanu, in the book of Ruth, in the book of Sib, have you read a portion of your life where you're like, nah, I helped the devil there? Like, you know that your action helped the devil. You are, are, you were an assist. If you like, if you watch football, I don't know if you've ever watched football, they will say, you may not have scored the goal, but gave an assist. <laughs> you were like, oh, Satan, let me clear the way for you. Even, <laughs> mercy, oh, mercy. Even, I know, if you, I don't know why I'm using sports analogy, the basketball, <laughs> let's use football, let's stay in football, or basketball, it applies to both, where the goalkeeper, your defender, had kicked the ball out, so the enemy does not score. But then you scored a home goal. Do you know what a home? Do you know how painful and embarrassing a home goal is? As in, you scored against your own side. Jay. And the, have you ever been so embarrassed to come back to God to say sorry? Like you're like, I can't even believe I did that. Like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. As in, you're just embarrassed. Like at. It cost them, wow, wow, mercy. Oh, Escobar, that's some old school player that you remind. Yeah, okay. Give no opportunity to the devil. 
Then it says, verse 28, let the thief no longer steal, but rather let him labor, doing honest work with his hands so that he may have something to share with anyone in need. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouth, but only such as is good for building up as fits the occasion that it may give grace to those who hear it. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you are sealed for the day of redemption. Are you with me? Saying, don't give occasion to the enemy. Don't give occasion. First Peter chapter 5, and then we'll pray. First Peter chapter 5, verse 6. It says, humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Be sober minded. Be sober minded. Be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls like a roaring lion, seeking whom to, he may devour, seeking someone to devour. Resist him firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of sufferings have been experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. And after you've suffered a while, the, great, the God of all grace, who has called you to eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, I kept hearing these words, I put my body under. I put my body, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27. I put my body under subjection. I discipline myself. There is a responsibility we take in order to ensure that we're living in a way that does not give the enemy foothold. And Apostle support lets us know the way we live victoriously. In Galatians 5, verse 16, but I say walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Galatians 5, 16, walk by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the spirit and the desires of the spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to keep you from doing the things you want to do. Hello, it's because you actually want to do it. But you need the spirit of God to help you not to do the things you want to do that are not in line with God, what, in, aligned with what God wants you to do. Mouthful. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Now, the works of the flesh are evident. It doesn't say if you're born again. It says if you are led by the spirit. Romans chapter 8, read it in your own time today, lets you know that there is a possibility for you to either be a spiritual Christian or a carnal Christian. A carnal Christian, to be carnally minded is still death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So, when you when, when people assume that because you're a Christian, it means that you're good. No, you got to ask yourself, am I being led by the spirit and am I walking by the spirit? Because it is those that are led by the spirit that are sons of God and those that are walking by the spirit that will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. When you meet a believer and they keep falling and rising and falling and rising and there's there's particular areas of sin. One, you got to check. What's influencing that action in your life? It cannot be the spirit of God if, it's a, if, if the action is against God. And so you can, um, Legion gives us an insight. You know Legion? You know Legion? The name of the guy is not Legion. The name of the spirit in him is Legion, but we don't know his name, so we talk about Legion. But the, the man possessed with Legion gives us the, an insight to the capacity of man's spirit legion was roughly about a thousand demons and that's like a guesstimate a legion the human spirit the human body was able to house that many spirits the bible says you are god's building you are god's building in the area that you haven't submitted to God can be in darkness. 
So some people are okay not lying because lying is not their thing. They're good. They've yielded their tongue to God. They've yielded their tongue to God. But maybe you haven't yielded your hands to God. Maybe you haven't yielded your mind to God. Maybe you haven't yielded your emotions to God. Are you with me? And the area that you are unyielded in is the area you will walk in darkness in. The area you're unyielded in is the area you will walk in darkness. And that's where the enemy gets a foothold. That's why you've got to present your bodies, your entire self as a living sacrifice unto God. You can't keep one part for yourself. You got to give it all to God. Why? Because the areas you don't give, the area you don't turn the light on is the area darkness will thrive in. And that area that darkness thrive in, the enemy doesn't just take a foothold. You put your, he put, he puts his, I don't know if you ever, I, I used to have ripped jeans. I'm trying to get some again, but I used to have ripped jeans. And I realized that when I'm getting dressed in the hurry and I'm wearing my ripped jeans, it wasn't, I didn't have distressed jeans. They were just like ripped on the knees, by the way. I'm, I'm, I'm still, I'm in between generations. I don't know how to wear clothes that look like I was attacked. So, yeah, so I'm not, not quite there. But I realized that every time I was dressing up in a hurry and I put my foot in my ripped jeans, I widened the rip. Are you with me? I, I would widen the rip. I would widen the rip. Satan doesn't just want the foothold. The foothold is an entry point. Once he gets a foothold, he will continue to dig until he takes more and more and more. And if not even because of Satan, forget it for a second. God doesn't want to share space with Satan. He's not like, oh, I'll take the whole house but Satan can stay in the bathroom. No. He wants the whole building. You are God's building. You've been purchased with a price, the blood of Jesus. So God wants you to honor him with your entirety. You say, God, you can have my heart, but leave my appetite alone. He wants your appetite. He wants your appetite. God, you can have my voice, but you can't have my time. What are you talking about? I, I, he wants it all. He wants it all. It says... The works of the flesh are evident. Sexual immorality. Hello, hi. Hello, hi. And that's not limited to just single people. Married, single. Has, have, you, have you offered your sexuality to God? Have you said, God, you own my body. You own my sexual appetite. It is yours, God. Or do you think... I didn't say that God don't, God don't care about that. No, he does. He does. Because whatever you don't submit, an unsubmitted desire can be manipulated by the enemy. Can, will be. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these, I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Please note, don't read this and be like, he ain't talking to me. Hello, he's talking to you. Talking to you. Why? Because Ephesians was not written to the world. Ephesians was not, Galatians, sorry, was not written to the world. Galatians. Chapter one, he says, to the churches of Galatia, he was writing to the believers. So he's talking to you, he's talking to me. He says this, but the fruit of the spirit, another version says, but the, the fruit of God's spirit being in your spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control against such things, etc. <laughs> there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the spirit, if we are born again, we live by the spirit, let us also keep in step with the spirit. Let us also keep in step but let us also be led by the spirit. Keep in step by the spirit. Let us not become conceited. <clears throat> conceited, thinking I got this. Let's not become self-reliant.
let's not think we can do this in our own strength to be conceited means to be proud of your own abilities or achievement to be proud to have an exaggerated sense of self-importance thinking have you ever thought i got this and then realized you really ain't got it like a temptation has come anybody temptation will come and you're like i can handle this and then you quickly found out you ain't got it anybody yep you find out why because it is by the spirit that you do not fulfill the lust of the flesh so if we live by the spirit let us keep in step with the spirit let us not become conceited provoking one another envying one another so today we're going to pray i'm going to start you off with your prayers but of course in your own time throughout the day we come together to set the pace for the day and then you're supposed to please do it okay don't don't just abstain from food and think oh we i was there in the morning so i'm good no spend time with abba throughout the day our prayer is god sanctify our spirit man every wrong influence over our spirit man we've learned from david we've seen peter we've seen judas that they are able to our spirit man is able to communicate with other spirits but we are sons of god Abba. we are children of the most high god we are to be led by we're supposed to live by the spirit we're to be led by the spirit we're supposed to walk by the spirit keep in step with your spirit so father your word says in first thessalonians chapter 5 verse 23 that you will sanctify us holy spirit soul and body we present our spirit man to you with everything we've heard today lord jesus we repent where we've been conceited we repent where we've been so reliant on our own will on our own uh, uh, abilities to keep ourselves in <laughs> in truth to keep ourselves living in a way that is pleasing to you lord jesus where we've thought we can handle it but we haven't relied on your spirit we ask for your mercy oh god we ask for your mercy 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 father i ask for your mercy where we've gone for behavioral modification but we haven't been led by the spirit where we've thought it's okay to just do good instead of being led by the spirit we ask for your mercy for the based on what you have showed us today lord jesus help us uh, to be those uh, that live by the spirit that walk by the spirit in the name of the lord jesus that keep in step with your spirit in the name of the lord jesus uh, that will be those that our spirit man is subjected to your spirit so that we will not even listen to the influence of other demonic spirits in the name of jesus or demonic spirits at large in the name of the lord jesus lord jesus i ask that you purify our spirit man in the name of the lord jesus Father, I present ourselves to you, God. Ida Mako Surra Baba, Ira Baba, every influence. Kia Rababa of any spirit that is not of God. Rabba Kosuraba, Irababa Bakushkata, Ida Baba Bakande, Mekondeliabai, Erebre do Surra, Irababa Baba, Ikantulabai. Your word says the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Ma Rebeke Sidarama, Irababa Bakushka, Ida Rabakade, Irababa, Manderebe Kurra, in any area, Mako Raba, where our actions have invited a spirit. 
spirit that is not of God. We ask for your mercy in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, would you search us, O God? Even as Judas was already stealing from the from the person. And Satan found a foothold. Father, I pray that you search us, O God. Where is the foothold in our lives? Where are the areas that are giving the enemy access? To oppress, to depress, to suppress. Manto Koshkata, Irababa, Kade Lembre Idara, Mandere Bebe Kurraba, to exert influence, Urababa Kande, Menkonde, Rikato, Ikata, Ribababa, open our eyes to see it, O oh God, in our lives. Search us, O oh God, Irababa, Urababa, show us if there's any wicked way that we're able to repent in the name of the Lord Jesus. Mantere Bekira, Antala Radoska, Erebebe Kurra, Inamama Mama Casa, Erebebe Kurra, as we repent. Repent, my God. I declare that today will be a day of deliverance in the name of the Lord Jesus. That today we are loosed. We lose ourselves in the name of the Lord Jesus. As we awake, in our spirit man, according to Isaiah, Marco Surara, we awake, we awake, and we lose ourselves. Marco Sunana, Ebredosh, Kebrede, Bredakia, Bakota, Lia Bakai, Rebe Bekata, we lose ourselves. Inananana Kaso, Irarara, 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 we lose ourselves in the name of the Lord Jesus. Marco Surra, Mandelebra, Errababa, from demonic influence. Marco Surara, Irababa. In the bakato, irababa, we lose ourselves. Ikato, 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 irrebrede, ebradoshkata, irabababa, mandere de rebeka, errebebe konda, errabababa, ikando rebe, merushkata, evrado, sebredo, bre idara, irabababa, ikandalara, irabababa, mandere de ka, urabababa. Father, sanctify our spirit by the blood of Jesus. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 14, that the blood Lord of Jesus is able to purge our conscience. Our conscience sits in our spirit man. Marco Surra, our conscience. Marco Ndorebe is a function of the spirit man. Therefore, let the blood of Jesus purge. Father, purge our spirit. Mando Rarara, Irebebe, Evrado, Ekata. Ikantalabra, irababa, mandereba, every spirit, mako surara, mandere, orara, every influence, manto rebebe, contrary, manto rababa, to the spirit of God, mando raba, today we lose ourselves, mazaye, bezo, zaye, bazado, bazede, meranto le ikai, ebradoshkata, inamakunda lara, radebeshkata, inamakasunde, evredo sibredo, we will not be moved by the enemy. We will not be moved as we repent before you, O God, of any work that we are doing that is inviting a demonic influence, influencing us to sin against you, God. Let there be a loosening. Ida, Zedo, Zede, Zado, Erraba, Rebaba, Erebe. Kato, Erebrekede, Irababa, Ikada, Ebredo, Eraba, Irebre, Irabra, Iskada, Mantalaba. Father, you said upon this mountain there shall be deliverance. Angande begendo goze, Bagada zegedo, Irababa, and holiness. Father, let there be deliverance. Inamaka Sundara, this morning, Marosheke, Beregedo, Regidara, and throughout the day, empower your people to loose themselves. Ekan. Do kada ba yikado erebebe kade irababa ba ba irababa ba ba we lose ourselves ba kosu kata irababa ba ekante rebre koshka erebebe be kura irababa you said in your word awake awake O daughter of Zion put on your strength manto rebebe be kura in Isaiah chapter fifty two ikanta ba you said we should put on our beautiful garments ma kura ba ba irebebe you said we should shake ourselves from 
from the dust and arise. You said we should loose the bonds of our neck. Father, part of fasting in Isaiah 58 is to loose the bond of wickedness and to let the oppressed go free. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, wherever we may be oppressed, wherever there is a yoke masukata mandara father in our lives loose the bonds of wickedness undo the straps of the yoke we declare marababa that every area of oppression we go free we break every yoke of our lives in the name of the lord jesus our spirit will not be oppressed in the name of the lord jesus our spirit man will not be suppressed in the name of the lord jesus makata ekata makato irara our spirit man will not be depressed in the name of the lord jesus spirit of the living god let there be deliverance let there be the sanctification of our spirit man that we will be those that are led by the spirit that walk by the spirit that are filled by the spirit of God let the blood of Jesus and the fire of the Holy Ghost go into our spirit, man. Purify us, refine us. That our lives will not be conducive for the enemy. Father, Ikanda, as we stay in the refiner's fire, mando koshkata, let anything in us that is not of you, that is not from you, makosoko talaba, irababa, leave in the name of the Lord Jesus, mando raida, erebebekai, orababa, emakasatai, ekatonanai, embadai, ebadai, eraba, as we repent, we rabababa, we break every agreement, inananakasotai, irababa, with any demonic spirit as we repent to you oh god we break the agreement we break every agreement with anger we break every agreement with lust we break every agreement with strife we break every agreement with depression do a deep work in us, my God. Ida da da ske mekinda eskun tai kando kosta ikato ebredon da 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 da. Loose the bonds of wickedness. And da 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 bashka irreberonto irrabababa irrebebebebebeka. Undo the straps of the yoke. Irrabababa. Let the oppressed go free. Manta ekata manta. Break every yoke in the name of the Lord Jesus. For the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Mando rebebe koshka ida bababa. You've anointed me to proclaim liberty to the captives, the opening of prison to them who are bound. Ayanda yande yende. Benda din da basso conda da in the den the den the ribarando so erbe benduri a cande di cadone escadora escadora erbe candoca i canta da baca scante be canto cante quinta baca you said we will submit to the enemy then we said when we submit to God we are able to resist the enemy we do not submit to the enemy we submit to God and we resist the devil out of our lives out of our spirit man in the name of the Lord Jesus our spirit belongs to you abba because we've been bought with a price therefore holy spirit today do a purging of our spirit do a deep work my god do a purging of our spirit man jesus do it, Jesus. Purge your church. Purge us, O oh God. And as you purge us, my God, do not leave us empty. Fill us with your spirit. Fill us with your spirit. Fill us with your spirit. Mm -hmm. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Give it like God said. Amen. 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 Getting you started, Aya, <laughs> in your prayer today, do business with God. Get into that place and say, God, purge my spirit, man. <laughs> the enemy cannot dwell here. No contrary spirit can dwell here. I belong to Jesus. Yes, in Jesus' name. Shouts of grace for the day ahead. We are praying tomorrow. I know it's Saturday and some people like to sleep in, but we keep the altar. We keep our time of encounter with God. 5 a.m. tomorrow. See you then.